I've got some good news. Vario's most sought after watch is available to pre-order once again. I am of course talking about their dual faced reversible dress watch. I picked up this watch around six months ago and I never reviewed it because by the time the watch arrived, um, they'd sold out and I don't tend to review watches that you guys can't buy. I just think it's bad form. So I've held on to this watch in the hope that they'll restock it and make it available once again. And they have done as of the 19th of April 2023. You can go to their website and pre-order a couple of color variations. I will, of course, put some links in my video description um, to their website. They're not affiliate links and I bought this watch. So um, no includes paid promotion icon in this video and um, but yeah because i've never reviewed it so i'm going to head over to the light box now and um, tell you everything you need to know about this vario reversible watch now before this review ends i'm going to do something to this watch that i haven't seen done to it in any video thus far and that is i'm going to undo those four screws that basically hold this watch together because let's not forget we've got a couple of battery powered quartz movements inside that case and i'm curious to see um, how it's all been put together and of course those batteries although they do last for six years they will need to be swapped out at some point so it might be nice to show you what you're going to find um, if ever you need to do that um, yeah when i unboxed it i was surprised a little bit at how thick it was but then you do have to remember it is two individual um, movements and dials and two pieces of crystal so um, yeah, you need to cram a lot in there, really, um, to make it work properly. So um, the thickness can be forgiven, I think. And I did wear this watch quite a lot over the Christmas and New Year period, and it didn't feel thick or chunky or top heavy at all. In fact, it was very, very comfortable. And the only thing I had to be careful of is who I showed it to, because, well, pretty much everyone I showed it to um, sort of bagsied it. My mum, for sure, wants this um, added to her collection. So I suspect I'll get a phone call when this video goes live. Anyway, before I start taking it all apart, I want to tell you all the interesting stuff there is to tell you about this watch. Like, for example, um, these dials, obviously quite different. This is the Dressier dial, um, a fairly standard dial in terms of how it's made. Sunburst brushing on the outer section, a flat white rectangle towards the center. It's a sort of sector dial to some degree. The hands are blue, but they're not blued. I think they might just be painted. And um, But this is the dial. I should flip it over, shouldn't I? I just shouldn't just keep turning it around like that. Um, this is the dial that I prefer. It is an enamel dial, and I've mentioned it in videos. It is a bit of a thumbprint magnet, unfortunately, especially if you keep playing with it like I do. Um, I've mentioned in previous videos that enamel dials aren't that straightforward. To get that sort of glossy sheen sort of finish to the dial, um, there's quite Quite a lot involved so um yeah nice that they've gone to the trouble of making one side with an enamel dial and um, yeah just sort of standard silver hands um on this dial obviously if they were blue you wouldn't be able to see them very well a couple of crowns both signed with the vario v really easy to access although you do obviously need to um, just sort of flip it up a little bit, pull it out, and um, yeah, really, really easy to use, actually. Um, yeah, I'm impressed. It's obviously a dress watch, um, but there is some brushing on it. The larger surfaces are brushed, the curved edges or chamfered edges are polished, and the finishing seems nice enough. The transitions between the two are nice. Um, I do think that this um, swivel point on here, although it is needed, obviously, the fact that you can see it, does ruin the side profile a little. I don't know how that could have been done without those being visible, but yeah, they're not the prettiest, are they? Um, I do also like the fact that you've got these sort of um, spring, I don't know what, I'm assuming there's a spring under these ball bearings. Um, both ends have two, one either side, and then there's these little sort of seating um, points on that um, surround, um, which holds the case in place. It's really satisfying, I've got to say. I am a bit of a fiddler. I do like to fiddle with bezels. And when I was wearing this over the Christmas and New Year period, I was repeatedly taking off and doing this to it. So um, <laughs> I hope it doesn't wear out. But at the moment, it's working perfectly well. And I'm also pleased to say that both dials are protected by sapphire crystal and each piece has AR coating on it. So um, yeah, they haven't skimped and saved on the crystals. It's probably a good thing um, because obviously when you put the watch down, um, that piece of crystal is essentially... Um, you know what the watch sits on so um, yeah if it was a softer um, crystal it might scratch up a little bit so it's nice to know um, that you do have two pieces of sapphire crystal 
Now, it came on this strap, which has a sort of butterfly deployant clasp. I'm not wild about these, and so I have put it on a sort of standard Italian Vario leather strap. Um, I really like these straps, really, really like them. There's lots to choose from. Um, really simple. They're not the longest. I'll give you the longest and shortest um, lengths in a moment because it's not going to fit massive wrists, this. But then given the size, um, I don't think too many people out there with huge wrists would want it to fit because, well, it's quite narrow. Um, it's quite deep, but it is quite narrow. Right, I think I've shown you the watch enough now to justify me um, taking a little bit of a gamble and um, undoing those four screws and seeing what happens. Let's hope I can put it back together because I want to show you this watch on my wrist and I haven't taken any wrist shots yet. But anyway, um, I'm going to leave the strap on to help me move the watch around. So let me grab a screwdriver. All right, here we go. I found a screwdriver that works really, really well. It fits the heads perfectly. And as you can see, the screws are starting to come out. It's like an ASMR video, isn't it? I'm just going to gently fit that screwdriver into the screw and turn. Can you hear my tummy rumbling? I'm hungry. All quite long screws, aren't they? Yep, there we go. That's two done. Gently does it. Cool, they're done quite tightly. 50 meters of water resistance, I forgot to mention. That's number three, last one. There we go, but I haven't let the screwdriver slip at all on the screws. So yeah, I'm happy with how that has been done. Um, now what? Maybe flip it like this. Oh, I'm worried that if I just pull it apart, everything's just gonna fall out. Okay, let's maybe do this. Oh, there's definitely movement. <laughs> Not that sort of movement. <laughs> Although sometimes, oh my goodness, I'm just going to stick a piece of that on it. There we go. Ah, okay. Well, that was easy enough, wasn't it? And we've got what looks like four more screws. Yeah, let's do it. Go on, let's, let, might as well undo them all while we're here. <laughs> four. So I'm assuming now this side should just like the other side, pull off. Yep, and there we go. That was easy enough. Um, I wonder if there is, um, I, I suppose, hang on, I'm just trying to make sure I remember. I wonder if they're different or the same. And while I've got the movements exposed, I might as well show one of them to you. Here it is, as you can see, it says they're Ronda. The battery is an sr 616 S W. Hmm, right, so I think I'm going to put it all back together now. Okay, I've just discovered it does matter which side um, you put each of the faces on because you see this hole here, it is um, a smaller diameter on one side than it is on the other because, well, the screws need to countersink into this plate. Um, so, yeah, basically, I have to make sure that the blue um, dial goes on this side. Right, done. That's those four screws tightened up. Time to flip it over. Okay, had a little trouble with that one, but it's in. Excellent, all put back together. Oh, what a relief, I'm not gonna lie. I was sweating. Oh, right, I'm gonna take it outside now and uh, put it on my wrist. I'm quite relieved that I managed to get this watch put back together and I've just been outside and taken some wrist shots and oh yeah, it looks fantastic outside. Lots of light play. The sun was out and the light was reflecting off the dials, in particular this silver and white dial and all those um, high polished curved surfaces on the case. Yeah, it looked a million dollars. And one thing I did want to address though is the size of wrists that this watch will fit. It says on their website that if you've got a wrist um, larger than seven and a half inches, you probably shouldn't order it. And we do need to remember that the watch comes on this strap, um, not the one or not the style of strap that I've been wearing it on. But on this particular strap, I've measured um, the maximum length and it is um, 205 millimeters, which is just over eight inches. So I think on one of these straps, um, yeah, if you've got a sort of 
eight-ish inch wrist and you might be able to get away with wearing it. I was wearing it um, on this, um, well, third hole in, um, which is 190 millimeters. I have a roughly seven and a quarter inch-ish wrist. 190 millimeters is seven and a half inches. So that sort of all ties in. Um, let me just measure um, this strap, actually. It might fit shorter wrists or smaller wrists on this strap. Now I've lined it up um, on the supplied strap with the supplied buckle and it's basically identical. Um, the pin that fits through this hole is right at the edge of this part of the buckle and it is again 205 millimeters. So um, yeah, they're saying it'll fit seven and a half inch wrists and downwards. I think it might fit a slightly larger wrist than seven and a half inches, but um, yeah, don't hold me to that. Now, I don't think there's any denying this watch has proven to be very popular and very successful. And Vario didn't make it in massive numbers, but they did sell hundreds and hundreds of these very, very quickly when it first got released, um, showing that there is a market for smaller dress watches, but in particular, unusual um, double-sided dress watches like this. Um, it's quite difficult to put a value on this watch, I've got to say. Um, for me personally, because, well, I've not handled any other double-sided watches like this before, I must admit they're not really my thing, so I'm not that familiar with them. And But the fact that they're so rare makes it difficult, really, um, to put an accurate value on these. Um, but when you consider what's gone into producing this watch, um, the fact that it's got two movements, two pieces of sapphire crystal, there's obviously that additional um, swiveling element to the case and then also the fact that you've got well basically two movements that need batteries changing out so you need to make both movements accessible so I suspect you would expect to pay um, a little bit of a premium for a watch like this and um, yeah there really aren't many if any others around in this price bracket so for me I think it does represent really really good value for money okay it is 430 us dollars and i think a lot of people that follow my channel would think well you know you can pick up a really nice automatic watch for quite a lot less than that these days but well will they have two faces like this one i suspect not of course they won't um, because there really aren't many of these around so um yeah in terms of price and value for money i think it's there i think they're um well they must be charging um the right amount because they sold out the first time around and i expect this second batch to sell out almost as quickly well there you go guys um let me know what you think of this watch in the comments section i really wasn't expecting it to wear as well as it does um, but it really really does and um, don't be put off by the height because once it's on your wrist um, that height just gets forgotten it almost gets swallowed up by the fact that the strap is so comfortable and um yeah there's just not a lot of weight or size in the case so um yeah, you just don't end up noticing it. So I'm really pleased with that, actually. I think they've done a cracking job. Credit to uh, Ivan and Judy.